part 6 in how to make a space game from scratch tutorial. I said in the last tutorial I'd go over to controls, but then I realized that I went over controls in the last tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and uh, you, don't, you don't need your ship here anymore, just put that arrow. Because you want that arrow to control what ship you're going to be spawning as. Because if you go buy a ship, you don't want to, instead of having your ship change into a new ship, we're going to have the arrow just create the new ship for you. Okay, so let's let's uh, go ahead and we have since we have a ship, let's create a an enemy to fight. Just put down a graphic of what one of your ships are. Let's put the it's my pirate ship. <coughs> and under the pirate ship, it is going to be using a lot of the similar variables of your main ship. So you could just duplicate your ship and then put it there if you wanted and then change things. Because if you if I you open up the ship that I have in the file, I have an index and speed command here controlling, you know, so the ship isn't having any an animation unless it's moving. But I still have variable or facing. I have ship on. Oops. This is my ship. This is the pirate raider. That's me buying the pirate raider because any ship I have in here I actually made so I can drive to. Um, I have under here a variable facing. Actually, it does look quite different. So go ahead and just create a new object. <laughs> okay, I, I have in here facing set my variable facing to 180 because I want it to face towards me. Usually my ship's on the left. And Mm, what's this? I don't know what that is. You don't need that. I set my uh, ship, ship health or hit points to 100, and then I have a friction. In this instance, set your friction to 0.1. I think you know how to handle collisions now with getting attacked. And if the ship goes outside the room, you'll want it to wrap to the other side. So in this case, I drag under my control, I drag a code move underscore wrap parentheses true true to one once you start writing it the code should appear down here and you'll know how to finish it that way it'll wrap the closest it can get to the edge of the screen if you had 10 it'd wrap sooner if you had 100 it'd wrap way before you got to the edge of the screen okay under the step event I have a transform the sprite to the variable facing. I use facing because I want him, I want the the ship to be controlled through numbers on where it's facing, and facing represents numbers that change dynamically. And also, I like it to be able to when it's shooting, it'll shoot to where it's facing. This is a special command I have here. With a chance out of 1 to 500, and if he's in battle, I guess this is a good time to add this uh, this variable to your global variables. Sorry if this seems kind of cl cluttered and put in there, but there's so much going on, I just it has to put in piece by piece. Under your variable command down here, you know how we added the one where your ship is driving? Add this one. Global, let's see, global dot in battle is equal to 1. But instead, in here, put a global dot in battle is equal to 0. You don't have to have this unless you want your battles to be like Final Fantasy to where when you touch, then you you go into a battle. This means I'm in battle and I can't shoot and I can't have special abilities or anything unless I'm in battle. If I'm not in battle, then I can't shoot. Okay. So if I'm in battle and there isn't already a pirate raider in there because I don't want to or is greater than three. I don't want to make it to where this pirate raider keeps summoning more and more pirates and he becomes too hard to, too difficult to destroy. Create an instance of myself, pirate raider. And so basically the object is duplicated off screen and it looks like a new pirate's coming in to health. help. Under my ship health, if I'm equal to zero, then destroy me and create an instance of an explosion. Okay, if I, this is important. If this is going to make, all these commands here are going to make it look like the ship is very, 
dynamic and he has some sort of intelligence, but usually it's just he's following given commands. If my speed is larger than 6, I'm getting too fast, so set my speed to 6. And here's the, the one here. If the distance to object follow me, which is that arrow, is larger than 400, so I'm further away than 400, then just set a random uh, location and go that direction and with a chance of a 50, so it makes it look like I'm deciding on something. Go in a random direction at a certain speed. I'm going pretty fast for this because I'm hoping you're looking through the code I have on my file. Okay, this is how he's going to react if he's around a pirate, a pirate ally. Since we don't have that, we're going to go to how he reacts around player one. If player one, okay, that's speech bar, ignore that. Ignore that. <laughs> if the distance to the object, my arrow, which was follow me, is smaller than 800, so I'm getting closer to him. Set my speed, if, and if my speed is less than six, Set variable pace facing to a point direction. So point it's going to point toward me with this kind of point direction. X, Y, follow me dot X, follow me dot Y. While I'm following, with a chance of 40, since I'm getting closer, and my speed is smaller <laughs> than 6, and I'm in battle, sh shoot a plasma shot at me with a random facing. I know this is complicated, but if you just do this one thing, we can copy this guy and use him for all our ships and edit it. Okay. Go ahead and copy paste this from my other coding. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna hit play and see what this does. It doesn't look like much, but let's see how this dynamically affects my the enemy. And then I'll have to end the tutorial there. Okay, but he can't shoot me and I can't shoot him because we're not global dot in battle. I'm going to get close to him. As you can see, after touching him, I'm now in a battle. And now I can shoot. Remember we created that escape pod? Let's see if... Oh, look, they summoned in a new pirate. There we go. My escape pod is working. Notice how when I died, my little arrow, it's hard to see, but it is following my, my character now. And remember, they're following my arrow. Uh oh, I'm gonna exit my little skate pod. Now I'm my guy, and now the arrow is following my guy. It's behind it, so you can't see it. But they're not attacking me; they're attacking the arrow. And no extra coding is used for them to be able to know to go after my character. All right, uh, we'll move on.